Awesome. Jesse, are you going to be back there? Just Kevin. All right, Kevin. Give me some nuts, baby. Thanks, you got this, man. Thanks, Summer. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So, yeah, as Sumner mentioned, uh, I'm Kevin, half of the Pebble co-founding team. Jesse's over there with the, uh, with the camera so we can document this disaster. Um, all right. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about how to build a supercharged team. So, hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, in 2020, I co-founded Pebble. Um, it was, as Sumner said, an, an itch that I had to scratch, uh, that Jesse and I both had to scratch for ourselves. Uh, so Pebble is a platform for land investors to streamline their businesses so they can make more money. So a little bit of a backstory about me. So five years ago, I was living in South Korea and I was doing software, just like hourly, you know, hire, hired gun sort of, sort of work. And it was great, right? Software's, software does pay well and it was awesome, but I realized I was gonna have to do this until I die if, in order to, to, to make a living. And, uh, and so I wanted to get into real estate somehow. And uh, so I learned about land investing through a podcast and like you, I was pretty skeptical at first, but the more I like looked into it, the more I read about it, the more I was like, wow, this could actually happen. And I was living in South Korea and I thought like, I could actually do this remotely from another country and, uh, and do it that way. So, so I did and it worked. And in 2018, fall of 2018, I bought my first property, Desert Square, sold it for double what I paid for it 30 days later. And I was like, I'm hooked. This is the coolest thing I've ever done. I'm going to be an expert in this whole thing. And so that started this journey of just learning as much as I possibly could about uh, the land investing space. Success. So success happened. I did it, proved it to myself. Um, and now I just needed to become that expert that I knew I needed to be. So that meant learning a ton of stuff about a lot of things, learning to be an expert about marketing campaigns, mailing, text messages, whatever, inbound leads, handling follow-up, handling due diligence, comps, right? Contracts, funding, accounting, social media, marketing. I got to do automations and display analysis, data analysis and buyer's lists and down payments and ah! So you got to be an expert in a lot of things in this business. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how to scale a business so that you can not have to be an expert in everything. You do need to be an expert in everything, but how to not do everything. Okay. <clears throat> so at some point as you go and as you, as you scale, you're going to hit some pain, right? You're going to, you're going to be doing all these things yourself and you're going to hit some pain. Pain is really, really important when you hit it. When you, when you hit that pain, you need to write it down. You need to say, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this thing, likely because you're not very good at that thing, right? Mike talked about being terrible on the phone this morning. I'm also terrible on the phone. I hate being on the phone. So I should probably start recognizing that pain when I hit it, because that's a signal for my business that something needs to change here. Okay, so questions that you do need to answer for yourself are these two things. What am I uniquely good at? What do I wake up in the morning and do I get really excited about? Am I really excited about putting together that, uh, you know, that marketing campaign? Or am I really excited about, uh, you know, hooking up a website to Zapier and doing all this stuff? Like, what gets you excited about this business? The really cool part about this is that there's tons of stuff to do. And it spans a whole swath of, of different, different skill sets. So what are you uniquely good at? And secondly, what brings you joy? This is probably the most important thing because ultimately we're here to do the things that bring us joy. That's the reason I got into this business. I didn't want to be just forced to do everything. I wanted to do something that brought me joy. Because at the end of the day, you're not building a job here. You're building a company. 
And I'll tell you from experience, whether it was from my land investing business or building Pebble, building a company is hard. It's really, really hard. It's, it's pretty straightforward to flip a plot of land, like buy low, sell high, like anyone in this room can do that. Building a company and getting to that point where you can do the things that bring you joy, that's really hard. But I can tell you, it's totally worth it. When I look back at all these things that I'm no longer doing, that somebody else is doing like 10 times better than I ever did, that is a really good place to be in. And I think back to those times and I'm like, what? Like, why did I spend four hours a day on the phone? Like, I suck on the phone. Let me, like, now I got somebody else to do it. This is great. But this is important. Know your why. And everybody, I think all, everyone's talked about this so far, but this is really important. I want to stress the fact that if you're okay with a certain ceiling of success, if you're okay with, you know, just, just replacing a day job, like that's totally fine. If that's what you want to do, like I'm not here to tell you you need to scale up to a multi-million dollar business. That's totally cool if you want to stay with, stay that way. But you do have to understand that you're going to be in a job that's going to require you to put in a full-time effort or at least a part-time effort to keep things going. Um, if you really want to scale things, you need to start thinking about building a company. So know your why. All right. So today I'm going to share with you a few of the things that I've learned the hard way, a few of the mistakes that I've made, and hopefully give you a few lessons on how to build a, a killer company and a killer team. So what we're going to talk about are a few things. First, we're going to talk about documenting your processes. This is very, very important. A lot of people talk about it, but I, I can't stress enough. Documenting to a T everything that you do in your business, super important. Building an owner's manual. Next, we're going to talk about hiring. Hiring people, super important. You hire the right people, your business will take off like a rocket ship. You hire the wrong people, it's not going to go that way. Lastly, and probably most importantly, learning how to delegate, learning how to let go. If you're anything like me, I'm a control freak. Like I, I freak out when, when I step back from something and let somebody else take it over. Anybody else feel like that in here? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's hard. It's really hard to delegate. Probably the most important thing, to let go and trust people to, to uh, do the things that, that you want them to do. Okay, step one, documenting your business. We're gonna create an owner's manual for everything that we do. Now at Pebble, we save every, every like common thing that we do, whether it's like generating a one-off invoice for someone or, you know, finding, a, a handling like a mailing thing that broke or whatever. We document that in a system. We use Notion. It's just like a simple note-taking thing, but you can use Google Docs, you can use Dropbox, whatever. The point here is just to get organized with an owner's manual for your business. Secondly, it's really um, important. You don't need to do everything at once. Uh, yeah, and you, you don't need to do everything at once. Just start with the most painful thing that you're currently doing. So if doing due diligence is the most painful thing in your business, that's the thing you wake up in the morning and you're like, I hate doing due diligence, start documenting it. Okay, first step, record yourself. Record yourself doing that thing that you hate doing. This can be like taping your, your phone to the wall and video recording yourself doing it. It can be screen recording on your computer, whatever it is, record yourself doing that thing. And as you're doing it, talk out loud, like as if you're explaining this to somebody sitting next to you, you're going to be talking out loud, explaining the process that you're doing. Try to be as detailed as possible. But you, what you should end up with is like a 15, 20 minute video showing this task that you've done and explained in some amount of detail. 
The next thing we're gonna do, um, well, down the road when we hire somebody, we're gonna actually give them that video to uh, do a further documentation. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna create a playbook. So we take our video we recorded, we put it in a Notion document or a Google Doc or wherever, and then you're just gonna bullet point the top level steps, right? The five steps that this video goes through, you're just gonna bullet point those out. Once we hire somebody to do this job, once we get somebody in place, the first thing we're gonna say is, okay, your job is due diligence. Here's the playbook, watch the video. They're gonna watch the video. They're gonna go through the four things. They're gonna take your five-step bullet list and they're gonna expand that out into like, here's actually the things that we have to do, right? We go to this website, we do this thing, we copy this thing into the spreadsheet, we paste this thing over here. They're gonna document that out in as much detail as possible. It's important that the person do, writing that actual documentation is not you. And it's not the person that recorded the video because likely, you don't have, you come to that problem with a lot more context, like you know all of these things in your head that that person who's gonna now do the task doesn't know. So they're going to write down all the things that you take for granted. They're gonna, they're gonna talk about all those things that they had to actually do to get that job done. Okay, so create a playbook. And remember, this playbook, these, these playbooks that you're creating in your, in your company owner's manual, this is a living document, right? You're constant, we are constantly updating this. We're constantly adding things to it. We're constantly making sure that, the, that when somebody asks us how to do something, like we've got 15, well, we've got 12 people working for us now. When somebody comes and says, hey, how do I run a, an invoice? I, even though I can tell them really quickly, like, oh yeah, just go to Stripe and pull this thing. No, we, we say, go to the playbook. Even if you can answer the question for them, go to the playbook. There should be a playbook in there. And if there's not, hey, that's a good signal that you should create one. Okay, so playbook, super important. Lastly, the bus principle. The whole goal of this living owner's manual is to Answer the question, if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, would my business continue to run? For most people, that's no, and that's okay. Like, we don't have to be perfect, but our goal here, like our ultimate, I'm retiring into the sunset goal here is to answer the bus, the bus question, that I can go away, my company will continue to operate without me here. That should be your ultimate goal. Okay, hiring. This one I have lots of thoughts about and really spend a lot of time on hiring. So building a killer hiring process, really important. My slide might have gotten a little messed up here, but uh, yeah, communicating your values. This is really, really important. So many companies, you know, they're like, I need to hire uh, a VA to do due diligence. So they write a job description. Need virtual assistant, do due diligence. Step one, very organized thing, blah, 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 blah. Like they're, they're just listing out these, these things that this person has to do. That person reading that knows nothing about you, knows nothing about your company, and is not going to be excited about just reading a list of tasks. And ultimately, what you want to have in your company are people who are excited. They are excited about what you're doing, what your values are. I'm sure everyone in this room, if you haven't already, you will reach that point of ultimate success where you are like, you sold something and you made a profit and you're like super pumped up, right? Remember that moment and try to communicate it to people that are coming into your company. Because if you can communicate that excitement to them, they're gonna be really amped up about working for you. So communicating your values. We'll talk about this in a job description, how we do that. Um, build a solid process, super, super important. So every candidate that comes into Pebble, I just got done hiring someone. We hired like 100 and, or we had a, 120 some applicants. Each one of those applicants goes through a very regimented process of how we review them. So step one, 
they get they submit their resume and answer a couple questions on our website they get an immediate follow-up that says hey thanks for submitting your uh your resume we're super excited kevin is going to contact you in 24 hours with the next steps within 24 hours i respond with another automated thing but it sounds very personable it says it says uh it says uh yeah either looks great here's a link to my calendar schedule a 30-minute interview or you know your your experience doesn't fit thanks anyways for applying please keep an eye on our job posting for more opportunities so that just like that's pretty basic level of of process most companies can't muster that like most people applying will just never hear from the company they applied to they'll just get they'll get totally ghosted or they'll hear back three weeks later it's like hey you want to come in for an interview sometime like that's not good enough you want people you want to communicate to the people who are coming in that you got your stuff together you've got a process in place that's going to encourage encourage them it's going to communicate a value that you have things under control at this at this company okay again tell a great story tell that story of how you got into the business communicate that get excited about it try to read from that person you're talking to are they are they getting excited when you tell your origin story if they're not probably not a good fit but most people i so so when i do my 20 minute intro interviews i spend five minutes just giving a history of our company a why i started doing land investing and i explained that that moment of success and the people who get really really excited about that are the ones i want to find i want to find those people who who uh who are gonna come in and be excited about the company okay you need to learn to shut up and listen on interviews you really gotta listen ask a good situational question and then just listen that person should be able to tell a story back to you and you need to be good about listening to that so um yeah learn to listen challenge so another thing that we do so if you're hiring like a due diligence person you should come up with an example problem of what they're going to actually be doing in their day job and it doesn't it doesn't have to be complicated it just has to be like okay i want you to go through this checklist of things here's a fake property that i put together for you i want you to go through this thing right it could be go to zillow and find some cops comps it could be go to, you know pull out some go to the county and figure out where this what the zoning is like those four things are pretty easy to do but you will quickly in a challenge figure out is this person detailed enough to do those things we do this with all of our all of our hires whether it's a support person we have them answer fake support tickets if it's a developer we ask ask them to build a little fake thing that they can show us about if they can actually do the job before you hire them that's a good good way to gauge okay and lastly don't settle i can tell you from experience hiring the wrong person and then waiting and waiting and waiting to actually fire them which is another thing that we're going to talk about um, is a lot harder than just interviewing more people so if someone's if you're hiring someone whether it's just a basic va in the philippines if they are something that doesn't sound perfect find someone else just keep keep going and it might take some more time but i'm telling you finding the right person will 10x the work they do and it's important to find what the what that just blew up okay cool we got one more so we're still good <laughs> all right uh okay so this is this is a job description for uh for pebble and uh, you don't have to read the, the details here. I'll just go through what the top thing is. So important thing at the top is a hook, something that's gonna make somebody excited to work for your company. Shape the land, future of land investing wherever you are. We give like a quick intro of like something you wanna grab the person's attention. Secondly, we talk about our values right there at the top, what we value. These are the things that we really care about as a company. Jesse and I spent a lot of time like documenting out what we really care about what we 
want for this company. And so we list those out at the top. Then we talk about you know, who, who you are and who we want, the type of person we want. And then most importantly, our job description is like way down here at the bottom because ultimately like no one's gonna read it. Like it's not really a big deal. What we really care about is the type of people we're hiring. Okay, lastly, got just a few minutes left here before lunch. Uh, lastly is delegating. This is one that a lot of people really struggle with. And that's, uh, okay, yeah, delegating. Really, really important. Like I said, it's really hard to let go and you're gonna bring someone in and you're gonna teach them a task and you're gonna say, okay, do that task and it's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. If they get to 75% of what you could do, that's still awesome because that 75% is stuff that you didn't have to do yourself. So learn to let go. It won't be perfect. Trust, but verify. So let them do that thing on their own. Give them the space to do that. Make sure that you instill some trust in them that, that they are able to do things on their own. But verify. Make sure that when they are doing things that you're taking a look and you're making sure that we're course correcting as we go here. The worst thing you can do is just let them go on their own for a month after you just hired them and then you come back and look at all the comps and they're like way off, right? That's a, that's a problem. We need, to, we need to make sure that we're keeping those check-ins um, going there. Empower, empower the people to, to do their own thing. Like people really value having some freedom to make some of their own choices. Give them that. And then lastly, fire fast. So if someone's not working out and there's some like, I'm not talking about course correcting and like we, uh, we obviously need to make sure that people are, are stepping up and, and doing the right thing. But if there's some like core problem there that you're noticing, like you have a support or you have a due diligence person that's just constantly like missing major pieces in the process. If you bring that up a few times and like it's not getting corrected, I'm sorry, but no amount of coaching and talking to them and helping them out is going to fix the problem. And it's likely that they're just in the wrong spot. There's probably another company out there that's going to work way better for that person. I know it sucks to fire people, but firing faster is always going to be a cheaper option than spending the time and delaying that, that process. Lastly, I just want to say that as a business owner, as someone who's building a company, you need to own it, right? This is, this is your deal. This is your game. You got into this because you wanted to be an entrepreneur, not because you wanted a job. You need to own it. You're no longer flipping land. You're now building a company. So that's all I got. Thanks. <laughs> I think we got a couple minutes for questions. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to run this mic out to you guys. So if you guys have questions, raise your hand. We have to be mindful of time. Who's got questions, raise your hand. Everyone already knows all the answers? Come on. Yeah, in the back. But that, uh, One sec, we'll wait for the mic. I just want to know how can we connect with you? Are you on YouTube or social media? Oh, oh. yes, we are. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what, what website is uh, pebblerei.com. We've also Jesse, marketing man over here, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. <laughs> Search Pebble, you'll, you'll find us there, yeah. Okay, thank you. I just write the code, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about the social medias. <laughs> hey Fantas JT. Yeah, hey, fantastic presentation. So my question for you is how do you ensure when you're making your hires that they are deeply aligned with your core values? Yeah, so that's hard. It's really hard to do. What, what I try to do is ask some questions that try to point to some of those core values, right? If you, if you really value, um, like one of our core values is being nice, like being, being respectful and kind is, is like, that's one of our first core values. So what I'll ask is like, hey, tell me a situation where someone wasn't kind to you and like see what they say. If they say, oh yeah, like that's never happened, maybe they're not kind to other people. <laughs> so 
Uh, yeah, so that, yeah, that's maybe what I had to say. Yep. Yeah, I didn't mention that. We have a, every hire we get, we tell them upfront, you're on a 90 day probation. And we just, I mean, we don't call it probation. That would be weird. But we say like, this is a trial run. We're gonna, we're gonna meet every month. We're gonna have like a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, actually we, we meet every two weeks. We have like a bigger review every, every month. And then at 90 day, we basically say yay or nay, so. Ajay, yeah. what's up, Kevin? Hey, hey Ajay man. Sharma, good to meet you, man. Oh, hey, hey, <laughs> do you like saunas? You just look like a guy that look like a guy that would like saunas. Hey, really yeah. great presentation for anybody that wasn't super tuned in and taking notes. This is the roadmap to 10x your business over like a 12 to 18 month period. Super detailed, tactical. Thank you very much for doing that. Thanks. My question to you, sir, and you just went over it a little bit. Can you walk through just what that QC looks like? As you you know, you said trust but verify, right? We hear that all yeah. the time. What does that really mean? Can you unpack either like a use case or a story? or you're something there in a time of a successful, unsuccessful. Yeah, yeah. So um, I can tell you from, from like, I, I run the development side of, of Pebble. So I'm basically responsible for the code get, that gets shipped to, to production. So we have a very stringent process in like a new coder comes in, we, we have them go through a pretty regimented onboarding process where we have them, first they like basically go through a land investing course where we teach them the basics of doing land investing. That's like an important thing. I don't know if that's something you have to do for every one of your hires, but at least giving them an overview of the business. Um, then we start them off with some basic stuff. And that's like, so if you're hiring a due diligence person, have them go through that process of going through your playbook, doing the thing, and then the first few properties they're doing, you should be verifying that and course correcting on things they did right, things they did wrong. But it all comes down to a process. Every hire you get, even if it's your first one, like try to come up with that process. And it's not going to be perfect. Like the first time you do it, it's going to be hard. But each hire you get, you're going to get better and better at it. And just having that process to, to course correct is, uh, is important. Yeah. Hey, keep it short, Audrey. Come on. Jeez. If they're at eighty percent of what I would do, that's like great. Like that's that's close enough. Eighty percent, right? That's a B, right? That's good enough. <laughs> they're hopefully they get to an A in the next uh, in the next couple months. So yeah, we do. Uh, man, how are we doing on time? Yeah, we'll do two more questions. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am so glad you asked that question. I didn't have my notes here. I meant to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so yeah, we have a entirely global team. Likely if you're hiring VAs, they're gonna be global. They're gonna be not in an office setting with you. We do a lot of things to try to build a, a team culture. So that starts with a weekly sync where everyone on the team meets for a half hour meeting. We talk, we have like, uh, a scorecard, a company scorecard, where we have like 10 metrics that we're tracking, whether it's like how many features did we deliver? How many bug fixes do we do? How many demos did we do? How many support tickets did we answer? Like there's, there's a bunch of stuff that we, that we track internally with Pebble and you can come up with the same KPIs for your business, I'm sure. We go through that with the whole company so that everybody knows like where things are, we bring up problem areas, things to improve, that thing. That's sort of stuff, and we have that in a in a weekly sync. So having that weekly cadence is really important. Something that we have just started using, like what we started this summer, was the Kumo space. It's Kumo space. It's like basically a an office in a video game. It's like Sim Cities for an office. And you get like this virtual office that you can build, and it's like super dorky, but it's it's been remarkably 
uh, awesome at getting us. So we, you basically have an office. You, everyone on the team logs in there in the morning or their morning and they have like their office and they're just sitting in there and I can like in a video like Sim Cities, I can just like walk into their office and say, hey, uh, let's talk about this thing. And you can you can do like events and there's games and you can like play chess together. And it's stupid, but it's really good for getting people connected. So it's hard, like like anything, it's really hard building that that sort of touch in basis, but that's really important. So Kumo Space, there's a bunch of other ones that are similar to that. Yeah, it's actually not a question. I have a quick testimonial. So I've, oh, I've yeah, um, I've worked with these guys on and off for three years now. I've, I hung out with you extensively in Korea, and I feel like a lot of the players in the software space they get their product to a B plus level, and then they just kind of leave it on autopilot. And these guys, they're always striving towards perfection, and that's very rare. And I really appreciate you guys for that. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, that was awesome, Drew. I like to watch, Drew. It's a beautiful watch. <laughs> Thanks. Give a little bonus question. I just have a question. Actually, I'm, I've always been curious about the story. If there's a story behind the name Pebble, I wondered if that was something that was part of the values or whatever. So, hey, Jesse, what's the story behind Pebble? <laughs> it it sounded cool. We had we talked about like how you know you're like you've got pebbles across a pond that you can like jump across and get to the other side. It had that like land thing in there. So yeah. Can we got one last round of applause, please. 